Mount 31, welcome to section 9.3 where we're going to learn about geometric sequences. Um, so when you hear geometric sequence, again, we're still making a list of numbers, but rather than arithmetic, they're going to be geometric. And in section 9.2, we did arithmetic sequences, and that's when I either added or subtracted a common difference to get from one term to the next. With geometric sequences, Rather than adding or subtracting a common difference, we're going to multiply or divide by something we refer to as a common ratio. So that's the, the huge discrepancy between arithmetic sequences and geometric. In arithmetic, we're adding or subtracting to get from one term to the next. And in geometric, we're multiplying or dividing. Here in arithmetic, we use Ds. In geometrics, we use Rs. All right, so. The outcomes for this section is we're going to find the common ratio for a geometric sequence. So when you hear a geometric sequence, that gets the letter R associated with it, whereas back in 9.2 when we had arithmetic sequences, we had a letter D associated with it. So we're going to find that common ratio, and then we're going to use our explicit formula for a geometric sequence, and then at the end we'll look at the recursive formula for a geometric sequence. So let's unpack a little bit more what a geometric sequence is. So a geometric sequence, or geometric progression, is a sequence in which each term after the first term is obtained by multiplying the preceding term by a fixed non-zero term called the common ratio R. So anytime you hear geometric sequence, again sequence, you think list separated by commas, but geometric, we're going to associate the letter R with it. We can find the common ratio by choosing any term after the first and dividing it by the preceding term. So this is going to help you find that common ratio. So it's a sub n plus 1 in ratio to a sub n. So that could turn into, for example, you could look at a sub 2 in ratio to a sub 1, right? Or I could say, or you could look at a sub 7 in ratio to a sub 6. Whatever n is, right, whatever term this is, if this is a sub 5, this better be a sub 6. If this is a sub 100, this better be a sub 100 plus 1. 100 plus 1, 101. I can do 100 plus 1 in my head. So current term, previous term. All right, so with that, before we get to like a more formulaic approach, let's think about this in terms of a real world setting. All right, so let's go ahead scooch up the page and take a look at example one. All right, so we have example one here saying, suppose you receive a gift on the first day of each month for a year, All right, starting with $50 on January 1st with the amount doubling each month. Now I want you to hear doubling, All right? That means each month you're gonna multiply this gift by two. All right, so here we're multiplying by a number. In section 9.3, we were adding and subtracting numbers to get from one term to the next. Now we're gonna double, which is multiplying by two. How much will you receive on December 1st? And then let's see if we can spot that common ratio. So let's go through a couple of these. And I want you to think about how much your gift would be. So in January, right, on January 1st, we were told, hey, you are getting 50 bucks. Okay, fantastic. Let's see what we're gonna make in February. So on February 1st, I would receive double that amount. So I'm going to receive $100. Okay, fantastic. I'll take 100 bucks. Now I'm going to scooch this up a bit so we can put some more of, of these gift amounts in play. All right, so let me move that up. And let's start making this happen. So let me start doubling. On March 1st, I got a double, so I would now have not 100, but I would get a gift of $200. All right. On April 1st, when I double this, I will get a gift of $400. Well, that's even pretty sweet. Let's see, May 1st, 400 times 2, I'm going to get $800. All right, let's try June. When I double, Double 800 gets me to 1600. These are getting pretty nice, right? I would love to receive $1,600. All right, let's see what happens the last half of the year. So on July 1st, I'm going to double this. I'm going to get $3,200. Pretty sweet. 
Um, July is not the next month. August is. Let's see. So on August 1st, I'm going to receive 6400 And now we're getting into some, some fun money. Okay, so August, September. All right, when I multiply 6400 by 2, I'm now up to $12,800. Let's see, we have October. I'm going to write October, November. Oops, I forgot the first here. Let me finish writing out my months, and then I'll go find the amounts. So let's see what we're getting close to. So let me take $12,800, let's clear this out, $12,800 multiplied by two. So it looks like on October I'm gonna get $25,600. All right, on November 1st, let me double this. I'm gonna get, that's sweet, I'll take that, $51,200. It's a nice gift. And finally, on December 1st, I multiply this by two. All right, I'm okay with that. Anyone who wants to gift me $102,000, um, I'm, I'm fine. All right, I will totally accept that. So we got 101,000, oops, excuse me, $102,400. So there's the answer to the first part of my question, right? What will I receive on December 1st? Nice regular chunk of change, just 102 grand, great. Now in terms of finding this common ratio, I wanna scooch this back down just a bit so that we can see all of this, but I want this formula in play. All right, so if I want my common ratio, I need to take the ratio of any two of these amounts and we need to do the most recent month in ratio to the preceding month. So you could do January and February, February and March, it doesn't matter, I could do July and August, December and November, but I need the more current month in ratio to the preceding month. So let me just do it with January and February. So R would be between January and February. February is the more recent month, so this would be 100 in ratio to its previous month of 50. And you can see that common ratio is two. Right? Now that's not the only ratio I could have done. I could have done it, let's do August and July, just so we can see how it's the, gonna be the same number. Between July and August, this is the more recent month so we would do 6,400 divided by 3,200, but you see I'm still getting that common ratio of two. So you look at the ratio of these successive terms, and you always do the ratio of the newer term in ratio, or the fraction of the newer term to older term. But either way, our common ratio in this problem, all right, is R equaling two. And again, how you do this is you look at the ratio of successive terms you go current term, or I should say newer term, to older term. All right, so with that, we're gonna flip the page and we're gonna pick up the nth term formula for a geometric sequence and work that. I'll see you in a few, bye.